Welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome to the first match review of the brand new season. And boy was this an occasion, was this an intense classico in America. Because let me tell you right now, let's kick off by saying this was no friendly. There was absolutely nothing about this game that was friendly. The intensity was incredible, the passion from the two teams and the quality. The stakes seemed very, very high, almost as though it was a title deciding game. And in the end, Barca have well and truly come out on top by three goals to nil. And what a performance from young Fermin Lopez. We're going to be talking all about the game, all about his stunning moments. It is coming right up for you. So come on. And let's do it. Because in terms of the starting lineup, guys, it was exactly as we were expecting from Barca. We spoke about it earlier on in the day. This is what the media very much anticipated from Chaffee. And as you can see there, four midfielders from Barca. And that was there basically to directly counteract what we saw from Real Madrid. They also lined up with four in midfield. Jude Bellingham among those four. Real with Lewandowski and Usman Dembele leading the line. Those were our two attackers on the day, and with only three minutes gone in the game, Oriol Romeo very nearly made his mark on El Clasico, and what an introduction that would have been there. He struck the ball so, so cleanly on the volley, it was just falling out of the air there on the edge of the box. He cannons it there off the crossbar, so, so unlucky, really could have been a wonder goal, and I've got to say, on Oriol Romeo, let's start here, what a really solid performance it was for him. He had a lot of minutes today in El Clasico, he had a tough day debut, of course, against Arsenal, but I thought he really bounced back well here. I think we saw a lot more today of what Romeo can bring. In a game like this, where the intensity was high, where the physicality was there as well, it was a really physical game, a real physical battle in that midfield at times, and I think Romeo showed what he could do. There was plenty of moments there where he had key blocks in the game, key interceptions, there was a few tactical fouls in there, and that's exactly what he's there to do. Also as well, to support Frankie de Jong, which he did well. I thought he allowed Frankie good freedom in this game to go about his game and to roam in that midfield and Romeo was there as the anchor that is what we want from him and it was encouraging signs of course there's plenty of games to come this is still very early on in his Barca career but this is much more like what we need to see from him rather than what we did against Arsenal he bounced back and did well I thought today in midfield and just two minutes after that strike there from Oriol Romeo Barca did have the lead, and it was another terrific move, you've got to say. The goal here from Dembele, wonderfully worked goal. Out wide it was with Gundogan from the free kick. He's out on the wide right-hand side. He cuts it back to Pedri on the edge of the box. He takes one touch there just to set the ball, slides it into Dembele. This has all been really cleverly worked on on the training ground. Dembele then also takes just one touch to set himself and drills it across goal. Thibaut Courtois has no chance. Real Madrid were not expecting that and I love the goal. There was five touches there from Gundogan to the ball being in the back of the net and it was really, really well worked. It was nice to see a kind of move like that from a set piece. That is the kind of thing we need to be doing on a more regular basis and it completely opened up Real Madrid and gave us a really good start to the game. That just set us there. That put the confidence in us a little bit and it also put Real Madrid on the back foot and of course it just had to be Dembele didn't it? After everything that's been said about his future over the past 24 hours to come out here, put all of that behind him, exactly the kind of way we wanted him to respond, and he could have gone even further too. Later on in that first half, he had another great chance one-on-one -on -one with Courtois. After a mistake at the back from Real Madrid, he could have made it 2-0 Barca, but this time Courtois just about denied Dembele. There were, though, we have to say, some concerning moments in that first half. First of all, in terms of injuries, 28 minutes gone, Eric Garcia came on to replace Andreas Christensen and even in a friendly I think seeing a sub that early was a big surprise especially given the way the game was going how intense it was to be making a change there really wasn't a good sign and immediately we were told there in the media that Christensen was coming off due to discomfort and then 42 minutes 
Ilkay Gundogan came off on his Classico debut, of course, here. He was also apparently suffering with some discomfort. It was actually Sergio Roberto coming on in his place in midfield for him. Although the good news is right now, what we are hearing about Christensen and with Gundogan, they did come off there as a precaution. They did feel something, both of them there, which is not ideal early on here in pre-season. But the feeling is right now is that there is nothing to worry about. There is no big injury problem. It was simply as that precaution. Barca playing it very, very safe in pre-season, but obviously those two coming off early in the game wasn't ideal, but the intensity was high. There was absolutely no hiding from that today, guys, especially in that first half. The tackles, they were flying in, especially from Real Madrid. I think they had three, maybe even four yellow cards there in the first half, and if Chaffee was unhappy a few days ago with Arteta and with Arsenal about the way they approached the game, well, I think today he'd probably want to square up to Carlo Angelo the way the tackles are coming in, Chuameni with an awful one on Gundogan, Kamavinga with a really bad tackle too on Naraho, and it all got quite heated there before half time. And this is the typical Classico style. Jude Bellingham was looking around thinking, What have I walked into here? What is this game? It's pre season. But hey, this is El Classico. And like I say out there, it was anything, anything but friendly. But what I would have to say though, guys, you know, hand on heart here, looking at the game overall, not just the scoreline, you know. Barca have won by three goals to nil here. We're going to come on to Fermin Lopez in just a moment's time. But I would not say today, let's be honest, that we dominated this game. You know, did it look like a Barca 3-0 display? Honestly, it didn't really. Real Madrid did have their chances. There were plenty of periods in this game where Barca came under real pressure from Real Madrid. Sometimes we look happy enough to soak it up and sometimes we dealt well, you know, with our full team on the field with that Real Madrid pressure. But as the changes started to come, Real were getting more and more chances. And let's be honest here, Ter Stegen was very, very good today. One of the best players that we had out on the field. And also, the woodwork saved us on a number of occasions. Real were very, very unfortunate. I feel they didn't score. And I do think as well they miss Karim Benzema. And that's something to mention here. Benzema, of course, now gone off to Saudi Arabia, but they did lack a number nine. You know, Vinicius was up there. Rodrigo was up there as well. There was chance in front of goal for Real Madrid, but they did lack their, that killer instinct. And I think that was highlighted, really, with their missed penalty in the first half. Usually, of course, that would be Benzema stepping up there. Araujo a judge to have handled the cross from Valverde, but Vinicius stepped up and he misses the penalty there. Cannoning off the crossbar. That was another the one of those moments there from the woodwork. But Real Madrid certainly on another day could have scored more. And I think the big concern for me from this game would be Robert Lewandowski today looked very, very isolated in his performance. I think there he cut a frustrated figure up front. We struggled really to get involved. It was a really tough match for him. And we we weren't really able to supply any balls into the box. We weren't really able to sustain any consistent pressure in the final third, really, to push up the field and get him involved. And every time he did get on the ball, he wasn't really able to affect the game in the build-up. So Lewandowski today, far from ideal in his performance, but... Let's talk about the final goals, because let's talk about one of the huge bright moments from this game, Fermin Lopez, because he made his entrance there on 62 minutes. And this is a guy, by the way, that a lot has been said about over the past few days. Apparently, he's really impressed Xavi, just 20 years old. He's been doing all the right things in pre-season. But today, he took that to a whole new level. To come on in El Clasico and to actually do what he did was remarkable. Because with five minutes to go in the game there, Fermin Lopez received the ball in space at a 20, 25 yards out from goal and probably he sees his name up in lights. He thinks, you know what, this is my moment and he just unleashes a strike on goal. And why don't we do this more often? Because players at Barca, they get the room, they get the space, we open things up, but very rarely do we take the shots on from range. But Fermin Lopez, he thinks, you know what, I'm having a go at this and what a strike it is because the way that he hits it there with such power, it's bending its way away from court it's arrowing into the left-hand corner, and it is an absolute golazo there. What a strike. The stadium goes absolutely wild, and even in pre-season here, like I say, this was a fierce classico. This was a goal that was a really, really special one for a young player. To announce yourself in this way, to seal victory in a classico, what a moment.
moment for young Fermin Lopez. And he didn't even stop there because in the final moment of the game there, not just on that call, not just happy there to rest on his laurels, he wanted to do more. He wanted to prove more. And he provided a wonderful pass. And it was a lovely, lovely ball there into Ferran Torres to see the pass, to pull it off in behind. Wonderful stuff from Fermin Lopez. And again, just like he did against Arsenal, Ferran gets himself a goal. You know, he comes on in the latter stages of the game. He's in and around the area. Apparently this season he's going to play a little bit more central as that number nine perhaps at times and Ferran gets himself in there gets a goal keeps the confidence going for him and what a cameo what a performance after coming on from young Fermin Lopez he's put himself right up there hasn't he he's put himself in Xavi's mind and at the end of the game we are all able to celebrate not only his display but a Barca win by three goals to nil over Real Madrid. So that there, guys, is indeed the full reaction from the American Classico there, live from Dallas tonight. And I want to know in the comments down below, what did you make of that performance there? What did you make of all three goals tonight from Barca? And especially looking at Fermin Lopez, the hero of the day, the announcement from the young man on the biggest stage of all. Let me know all of your feelings after this result and the performance from Barca against Real. I will be seeing you guys for more reactions soon. And certainly today, we're happy with that. We can build on that. And it's the kind of statements that we wanted to send out nice and early in the season. Thank you indeed for joining me here, whether it's late on in the night for you, whether you're getting up in the morning and watching this now. I really do appreciate all of your guys' support. And I will catch you soon. I'm off to bed now. But I'm very, very happy to get this win in El Clasico. But until next time. As always, Fiska, Elbasa. Oh.